was uh, omics there around 59 recently, even more. Euronomics, they become already systematic. But um, I'll talk about later a little bit in details. But all of these omics disciplines are vertical in my imagination, means that they're very tiny, very deep. <coughs> they follow one molecule. And, but to understand functionality of the body, the functionality of biological systems, aquil systems, we need to look at all molecules, how they work together at every single moment. And this ma makes lots of troubles now. Meta metabolomics has sophistic sophisticated, very expensive machines that you can run analysis of all molecules in the system at every moment, but still you need sampling and you have to kill the system. It's non non-invasive method, it, it is a method. Now, what um, I'm engineer by, back, by background, and I am Bulgarian, and the Bulgarians are famous with yogurt. Uh, and I, I was supposed to uh, make a system that uh, will produce a good yogurt, but then I realized that a good yogurt comes from a good, um, from a healthy cow. And um, um, we have Professor Chubik of talking about the science uh, 30, 40 years ago. Um, I did my PhD in, in Moscow, and at that time they, they used spectroscopy, which is called near infrared spectroscopy. Maybe you have heard about this slide. And um, I was the chance, the great chance to get to know and study more about this spectroscopy. And since then, I use this invisible light for diagnosis. So all my career, I've been working with this particular light, invisible for our eyes. But this time, I will bring you to this field of science. Um, I know that it, it won't be easy to follow me. I'll try to, <coughs> to do my best. Um, but one thing I, I would like, I, I'll talk about the idea of aquaphotomics. I'll talk about the water, how can we imagine and how actually works, um, does work um, this water in our bodies and in all, all the, the cosmos. Um, but before that, I would like to ask you to have this imagination together with me. Imagine that water, when we say water, what is your first imagination? Maybe water, maybe the rain, maybe the water in the river, maybe the water in the sea. No, the water as water molecular system. Now we go on the molecular level. But all those, a single water molecule is a very small, very small. The, that's why the number of water molecules in our body is how much do you guess? How, how much? Percentage, 99.9% .9 of all molecules in our body is water, are water molecules. So imagine that all the light, all the influence of the light goes to the water, through the water, right? So um, all the effect that we have of uh, different colors, different energies of light and sound, it goes through the water. Now, and what, all these water molecules, they do not exist independently. Imagine all the water molecules in a network, like all our, us people. Each of you is a single water molecule, okay? So we, we have our friends, we have our colleagues, we have our societies, and we do different jobs different functions we have for different work, we restructure. We get our close friends when we go shopping. We get together with other friends when, when we need to share, when we go to go to conference. And this is the same what water molecules do. And, but they have, they're faster, much faster than we are. They can restructure for the time which is 10 to minus 12 seconds. Imagine it's zero, 11 zeros, one second. Very fast. The speed of light, even 
that faster. So it means that all the, so I, I heard at this conference a lot about information um, and uh, to me, um, I like one of the definitions for information is uh, change. In the engineering world, we say delta. When you, you, you perform a change, when you introduce a change, it is already information. And this is what happened with, with all the work that we have, we have been uh, listening. Now, so I go, I go, we talk about what and why they know about exact photomics. Um, now, I would like to say one word about fractality of water. What fractality means that uh, every phenomenon that you see in water uh, on a micro, micro, micro level, nano level, you can see in a big global system like Cosmos. 70% of the surface of the Earth is water. 70% of our body is also water. Uh, it depends on the age. It goes down with the age. So if you ask me what, what aging is, I would say we just lose water. But it tells a lot, because losing water, we lose functions. So the working body in our body is the water molecular system. And 70% in the cell also is water. Now, the problem is, we talk about when we say water, and I, I said, please be with me and think of water as a water molecular system, as water molecular societies that restructure and get different societies for different function. Um, di different restructure, different uh, conformations for different functions. So, and this is what I would like to start with. Um, this is the, the water spectrum, which is, I'll use this word only in the beginning for two, maybe two slides. Um, this is, what does it mean? How water absorbs different parts of electromagnetic uh, energy. Uh, 10 nanometers is, uh, the, the peak here is in UV. Uh, so we have the, the highest absorption water the, uh, uh, has for, for energy is for UV. Simple. So we get our energy from, from this particular absorption. Not, not the whole energy though, but this is very important. Now, Water does not absorb visible light. This is a very good news for the whole society here, right? Imagine if water absorbs all the visible light, what happens? It's not boiling. <laughs> Everywhere will be dark, right? So, but water works as every natural element and system. It is very, very simple and it's very, very efficient. Water works with very low signal influence, um, low, very low amplitude of signals, low energy. In Japanese, we say shoine, low energy. So now, here, next to visible light, we have so-called near infrared spectroscopy. Everybody, I think, everybody here knows about infrared. And when when you say infrared, Maybe the first thing that, that comes to your mind is, oh, warm, warmth, temperature. We get warm. Okay. But the, the, the shortest wavelengths of the infrared range are called near infrared. And this is between 700 nanometers and 2500 nanometers. <laughs> now, what is... I'll get to the spectrum now. This is the spectrum and I'll get back to water uh, later. This is the spectrum of intensity of the sunlight. Just for you to think together in two lines about how much and what kind of energy water absorbs and how much and what kind of energy we get from our sun. So all of you work with this visible light, which is as intensity is the high, has the highest intensity in the whole spectrum of, sun, of the sun. This is visible and this is UV. Now, from here, 
you see, 645, somewhere 700 here. From here down, half of the sunlight is in infrared light. Half of the sunlight is invisible <coughs> for us. Some people can see a little bit longer than, than right. But why should sun has this half of the light wasted? Maybe not. Maybe it's not wasted, maybe it's used, and maybe this is the, the next goal of the society, to understand what this invisible light, half of the spectrum of the sun, is for. So, we haven't exactly done this, but um, let's go back to, if, if we go to the next slide, what, what you see is ex at exactly the same place where water does not absorb light. Sun has the highest intensity. What a good couple. What a nice couple, right? But what does it mean? It means that, now I'll get back a little bit here, the difference between this spectrum and this spectrum is, this is the light, the sunlight before entering the atmosphere. Okay? And this is the sunlight on the surface of the sea which means that all the atmosphere absorbs this part, these differences. So you see CO2, water, oxygen, these lines down means that this part of the spectrum at the sea level is already absorbed. But the rest of this half of the sunlight spectrum is available, so it is working in our body. One additional thing that is good to know is this, the visible light does not penetrate very much in the water. Um, yeah, it is reflected. So that's why you could see, we could see the surrounding. Okay? The, we have this term mirror, water mirror. So you don't need to see each particular building if, you, if we have a lake and you see on the surface of the lake. So you can see because this visible light is reflected by the water. Water does not absorb the visible light. This is the good news. But now, this infrared light goes deep into the water, gets absorbed, because the infrared light, uh, light and range is an overtone of the infrared, an overtone of vibrations, of molecular vibrations. Which means that all the molecules in our body will absorb a little bit of infrared because overtone means less, less, less absorbance. But what absorbs a lot? It is water. But if it is infrared light, infrared light, not the infrared, I'm comparing now, infrared light is absorbed fully, so nothing comes back. But infrared light goes into the water, what is absorbed, absorbed a little bit, what is not, comes back. And this is our information that we can get and measure. We can measure how much light comes back at each particular wavelength, means frequency, means energy. Which means that all of us, we have our profile around us. Now the sunlight is coming, it's coming into my body, it goes out of my body, after being absorbed by the water, preferably, especially by the water, and other molecules in my body. So the information about me, my spectra, you have it. It is in the, in the room, this energy. We have all of yours. Everything, all the plants, everything that, that contains water. So we communicate with this energy because it changes. It changes with our mood, it changes with our health, it changes with everything. So this is something that I would like to show you, how we can measure how much of energy we absorb and how this spectrum will become a holistic marker. It could become a holistic marker for us, for diagnosis. And not only that, we can use the same energy to diagnose and then to add to the system. So we, we use the same, we can use the same energy to perturb the system, 
means to, to provoke this delta, to increase the information, and then based on this information, we can do the perturbation with the same energy. Now, where is exactly near infrared light located? So you have visible X-ray, UV, visible infrared, and this is a part of. And near infrared has two more parts: near near infrared code with very short wavelengths, next to um, visible, which penetrates into um, ten centimeters. It depends on the, of course, how much is the water content, but it goes very deep into the tissue. It can go very deep into the tissue. Now I will show some instruments that we, we work using, using in, uh, we work with, we use in the lab, and this is the, the biggest one, uh, but it's a very, very precise. It has 0 0.5 nanometer, it's a bit science now, <coughs> 0, 0 0.5 nanometer step, which means a very tiny steps of information we can obtain uh, having the spectrum. And these are the, uh, the ways that we have uh, acquired spectra from different systems. Like, uh, oh, you can, this is connected to my yogurt story, right? This is a cow, the, the other of the cow. So we can, this is a probe with fiber optic that puts near infrared light into the other. It comes back. And what comes back is analyzed. The, the, light, the light that comes back, its spectrum is analyzed, and this spectral pattern is used for diagnosis. And this is a, a small 30 gram milligram, 30 grams mouse that we use in an experiment for prion disease diagnosis. Um, and the interesting, maybe at the end I can show you a slide, the interesting result was that we had, we took the spectra of the, of the head of the mouse and also of the, the belly. Guess what? Where can we find prion disease? Do you remember mad cow disease many years ago? And, and you know what prion causes in our brain? The same like Alzheimer and all the <coughs> amyloid formations um, of um, disease. It's um, <coughs> Interestingly enough, <clears throat> we found that the first diagnosis, uh, accurate diagnosis, was obtained not by the spectra of the head, but of the belly. Which means that the immune system is the one that suffers first, that starts. And which means that the light, the spectrum of light, is able to predict the, the, the disease, okay? So it, we can, by, by following the spectrum of a system, we can um, see, we can prognose, we can see the, <coughs> the disease coming. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, <coughs> this is um, a study on oxidative stress. Again, um, the spectra, we were able to uh, do also um, prognosis of uh, and diagnosis of oxidative stress. And this is our new baby. Sorry about that. This is a small um, instrument, a very small instrument that can give. This is an aquagram. We call it aquagram. Means um, this is from C1 to C16, which means that we found in this near infrared range um, specific absorbances of the water, let's say representatives of the water, the water players. Each of these water bands is directly related to a specific function of the water. When I say function, for example, Water can dissolve something, right? Why water can dissolve something? Only when it has in when the water molecules are structured in a way that they have small clusters 
And on the top of the cluster, they have OH, hydroxyl radical. And we can find it. One of these bonds is directly related to this structure. Another bond is direct, directly related to free water molecules. Free, you can get free for a very short time, right? Mm -hmm. The same with the water molecules. 10 to minus 12, only. They get free and they get to a cluster. They get free and they get to the cluster. All 1, 10 to minus 12. They're very fast. But this is how they restructure. <coughs> So, now, and, but uh, these free water molecules are very important because, and this is one of, uh, of criteria, if, our, if the system is capable of, capable of um, uh, finding the balance. Balance means health. Well, I, maybe I can show you later, but I will, uh, I'm, what I'm doing now is giving some basic terms and then I'll um, try to give some examples. Now, health is um, uh, for cows, I started with cows, and I can tell you that in the milk, somebody was talking about food and light. Here it is, so I'll see it. Food and light. Um, milk absorbs light differently when it comes from sick animals. And by the way, milk absorbs this particular light. We can tell if this is a good milk or bad milk. What bad milk means? You cannot make yogurt. You, can, you cannot make cheese. Cheese becomes very tasty. So quality control is the word that, we, that people use in food technology. But information for the food, the food marker, a quality marker can also, we, we look at this side. Engineers say, okay, well, this is a quality marker, but on the other side, imagine that we eat this food, and because we eat this food, we get this spectra in our body. We, this, we get this condition of the water in our body. All those molecules, I say aquaphotomics is a complex matter and energy water mirror. Water is a, is a really, really a mirror on molecular level. That water, single molecule goes into the water and water molecule networks reacts right away. So you, and by the way, water molecule, uh, molecular system changes. You can identify what kind of molecule is in there. You can identify, uh, identify the the molecule, it is, it is really, really the same principle of mirror. Now, so we, with this band, we know what kind of structures are the less like here. We don't have enough absorbance here. Or the, uh, uh, after certain perturbation we, we get from here, here. I will show you some examples later. And, and you see that we don't have enough energy, so we need more energy, we need more round um, aquagram. And this all is telling us it could be used for diagnosis and to tell us how we need to act upon this system. Uh, and all this story that I'm telling you, to my surprise, years ago when I started working on this, when I clicked and, and realized that actually when I, looking, I was looking at milk spectra, I realized that in, in milk the average spectrum of all healthy cows and all uh, unhealthy, where the, 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 uh, the, the difference was in the water absorbent bands. In these 16 bands that I showed you, they, 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 they made just different spectral pattern, different, and that was the, the important stuff. But this, all this that you can read now, uh, was found in the 16th century. Amazing. And of course, later on, in the 20th century, um, um, uh, people have talked about, of course. Uh, now, we have to realize, and with this technology that we have now, with all the LED technology, with all the photo detectors, this is something that we can make very easy. And uh, we can use light not only as a probe 
not only to to see the spectrum, but the, the beauty of this whole story is that you can, you can use the light to activate the system and change the spectrum and change the, the, the marker. So, um, I think uh, two, uh, half past two after lunch, is, this is very uh, <laughs> difficult. <laughs> but just to tell you that this uh, water molecules never stay alone and they always, always get in a, in, they make a structure. And I'll show you now a beautiful one. Do you remember this one? A, a single structure? Yesterday we had a talk about this. Um, this is called icosahedral. That, that has a, uh, this is also the structure of the water molecules, whatever it tells you. C60 has icosahedral structure and water. The, 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 the basic molecular structure has icosahedral. So, um, but this whole um, water element fluctuates. There are small elements, the single elements here, from four molecules and four molecules. And, and this is like our heart. They, all the time, they are changing. Now, when you look at this light, left side, what can you see? Can you see something? Can you see the difference between the left and the right side? The left four molecules and the, the, the right left four molecules? The left, the left side four molecules, they do not move. And the right are moving. Yes. And why do they move? Because they have freedom to interact with other molecules. And this is the part of the water that I call working horse. Now, one step ahead telling you that water has three parts in my image, not two. Most people will sell two. These are two parts. One, I call it battery, all the hydrogen bonded waters. All the clusters that, that pe people uh, like this word, clusters. I don't like it very much because um, you say clusters if those clusters are independent. I use the word conformations because all the waters, water molecules are connected. And in this connection they make a group here and then, then they move here make a group and here also you have a group. And, but all these groups also connect, connected. So we all are connected through the water, through the space. If somebody asks me, I don't know why people still ask if there is water in the space. You can see. You see the water spectra, you see the sun spectra, and the only answer is that in the space, from the sun to, to the, the, the earth, we have just water. Maybe, again, 70%. Now, this is, these are my batteries. Batteries, they store the energy. The hydrogen bond is very hard for me. And this right side, is the motor, the working horse. But there is another one that makes the balance between the two. When the balance between, there are actually two group, groups, big groups of disease maybe. I don't know, medical people will prove or disprove. One, that we work too much, that the water in us works too much. And the other one, that, that doesn't work. When you don't get your water in your body working, then it just can explode. So these are very, very, I think it's a very important point here. Now, what is a collective neuron? Well, this is the story that I started with. So we have all these reductionist theories, but we want everything coming from the, all the, all the light coming from the water can give all the holistic information about the system and it is directly connected to functionality. So there is no need to go and analyze each single element. But all these science, sciences, omic sciences, what we have from them is we know how to fit the balance. 
with a holistic marker, we will see if the system is balanced or not. But if it's not, now we, we know which molecule will help, help us to fit it. Or not only molecules. About if, if you have with you the knowledge about water, then you have these ideas and imagination that you can influence every aqueous and biological system, everything on Earth, probably, most nearly, with energy, with with source of different different kinds of source of energy. You can you can use light, you can use your own energy, you can use um, electromagnetic range, X-ray, sound, and why sound and light and the infrared, why they are so effective? Because they are in the middle of the spectrum. They do not get absorbed too much, and they get absorbed. So they can influence the water. And this is all in and out. So what they say, all the reductionism that we have now, contemporary science, all these single, single, single areas, uh, tell them in or young, I don't know, and aquaphotomics should be the other one. <coughs> because we, we, we make one. Now, how does it work? So, um, and I have one slide for this consecutive water spectrum, which is, which is the key point. Um, usually, I'm an engineer, I'm not spectroscopist, and this is the key maybe, because uh, spectroscopists would never do five conse consecutive spectra of the water, for example. If he does, if he does, uh, he will average them. But if you do five consecutive spectra of water, you will see how different they are. And when I, I made my first presentation in 2005 about this result, you see, um, he, this is the spectrum of the water. Can you see something? You see two big absorbent bands. And usually physicists, why this near-infrared part of the spectrum is not um, does not have attention is because you just don't see with your eyes, the spectroscopists do not see anything. Mm -hmm. We need multivariate methods to analyze the data, exactly what Rasmus showed the other day. So we have multivariate analysis, we, we need different methods to extract information from, from the big data set. The big data set that has many energies and many, many samples. So. Uh, this is the spectrum and uh, when you get different, every single measurement of the same sample, the same water, shows how water changes. And if you don't see this, these changes, as my colleague, when I presented this, he came in and he said, if you're right, I'll quit my job. Because the spectrophotometers, they have to show every time the same spectrum. And I said, not with the water. How can you imagine a light from 400 nanometers to 2500 nanometers goes into the water in order to see the response of the water? And you can see the same, the same water afterwards. No way. Of course, this light gets absorbed by the water. Water molecules restructure. They'll have different structure. They, they should have different spectrum. Very logical. And only by taking consecutive spectra you can probe the water, you can see, well, this water is coming from different source, A, B, C, we can identify it. Sorry. <coughs> now, this is, this is, after multivariate analysis, what, what we get from this spectrum, we get this. Lots of information, lots of interesting bands. These, these are the peaks that are related to the bands that I told you, that we have in our uh, instrument. The idea, the whole idea of aquaphotomics is to, you have water and light, we perturb water with light, with um, electrical signal, with whatever you want. And we have delta, we have changed spectra. And the way spectra changes is our information. And then, we find these specific uh, activated water absorbent bands, specific places where water gives us changes. So these are the points where we want our windows, I call them windows, 
this is the place, these are the places where we want to measure water. We want to measure how, at this particular energy, how much water absorbs, how less water absorbs, why it changes. Uh, maybe we have in the aqua system we have less absorptivity because we have um, less function of A, B, C or whatsoever. And we end up with this aquagram. These are the bands exactly in the, the first overtone. Now we talked about overtones. Uh, the main absorbent vibration tones are in infrared. And when we divide by two, <coughs> we find the first overtone. By three, we find the second, etc. <coughs> Sorry. We have overtones in a third, fourth in the visible light as well. <coughs> Look at this. This is very, very interesting. This is something that we, we did recently. We calculated something that, that uh, we had in there. We have these are our bands, and they are the ratio between these bands. Uh, exactly what is the ratio of Fibonacci between those? It's amazing. And we call each water spectrum we call water spectral pattern WASP holistic marker. So we have this water spectrum <coughs> which is holistic marker for, for example, this is the spectrum of the vapor and this is a water. Just simple, this is the first overtone, 13, 1600. You can see these beautiful sharp bands here. When you see that, okay, well you have vapor in your sample, yes, but I have vapor always in my water. You can see here. And this part is for ice. So in this water that I'm drinking now, there is vapor and there is ice at the same time. It's just different structures. And, and the ratio changes with the temperature. The most, the strongest, factor that influences the water, that can just change the water, is, guess what? Temperature. Amazingly. Absorbance means how much light water will absorb. Okay? The changes, the smallest changes, are 10 to minus 4. Very small. But always there. Always there. Consistent, stable, working. So you imagine how, what, how nature works, right? Now, 10 to minus 2 is the absorbance change that is caused by water. The strongest factor. So that's why our body, you change from 36.456 to 37, 0 0.5 degrees and you are sick. So this is related, it's all related to water. Now, this we call aquagram. And now, <clears throat> um, I'll show you these are two aquagrams uh, uh, measured with our new instrument. And the blue line is for females before starting to work. And the red is the aquagram of males before starting to work. Now, the first striking thing that we found is that these aquagrams are different. This is an average spectrum of the body of all males, all females. And you see differences. You see here. You see here. Now what happened after? Do you remember the, the, the color? These are females. I don't say anything. I just show you. <laughs> okay. Now, only females. Before work, after work. Okay? So, males, before work, after work. They get some energy here, even. Okay? Of course, they lose a little bit. 
but who loses most? Very interesting. No explanation. Now, these aquagrams are acquired from females. We, uh, they, we did an experiment with a certain type of water to see the functionality of this water. And the red is before drinking the water, and the blue is after drinking the water. So, what, we, what my point is here is that we can use the waters that we drink, all the mineral water, they have their own aquarium, obviously. And my dream is to see someday my aquarium today, because my aquarium also will change, and the aquarium of the water on the shop, and to choose the water that fits me today. Okay? Good. We'll do it. We'll do it. For my Japanese colleagues, it's not this slide, okay? So it means <coughs> water and light. This stays for water. Oh, sorry. I didn't use this one. This is for water and this is for light. Uh, Shodo is one of my weak points, so I like doing it. It's a, it's a meditation. It's an absolute meditation. <laughs> and now, food and light. What is this? Japanese orange called Mika. <laughs> and can you guess, okay, maybe for, for Japanese colleagues where this place is? Do you know the famous Mika in Japan? Arida. This is a Wakayama place, Wakayama Peninsula. Why I show this is because uh, Japan is the first country in the world that started using this light, invisible light, to measure non-invasively the sugar and acid content of fruits. And now you go to the shop and you have boxes and you can see if the, the, the sugar is 12 or 10 or 14, if you like, uh, sweet orange, you can buy this. If you like uh, acid, you can buy tea, etc. Why can we measure this? Only because this system that you can see here, this, this one, you have the light going through, through the fruit. It goes all the way. It, it gets absorbed by the water in the fruit and tells you how much the sugar is. This is the, co the complex collective molecular mirror. There is no way that you can measure sugar exactly because sugar content is, is low. And in the overtone, it's very difficult to, to, to measure the signal coming exactly from the sugar. But there is lots of information that we get from the spectra. From This is the spectra, by the way. This is the spectra. These are the spectra. Imagine, which is amazing, uh, the same spectra you can get from milk. Every cow has own spectrum. Every orange has own spectrum. The good news or bad news? Of course, we all are positive. It is a good news. So we have to turn it to work. Okay? So we use it. In spectroscopy, water is the greatest enemy. In infrared spectroscopy, water is the greatest enemy because water covers all other molecules and they usually, people evaporate water to get protein and sugar and other molecules. So we turned all around and said, okay, well, we use water because water molecular structure changes accordingly, uniquely, depending on the number of other molecules and the type of other molecules. So it is a holistic, holistic mirror. Now, different water have different aquagrams. So you see I have water here from Austria, uh, from Japan, for different waters. I have this uh, here, magnetized water. And when you look at the aquagrams, in, in the middle is a pure water molecule, filtered water. And all these red aquagrams are aquagrams for different types of water. And what I, I think is important to just to be with me, 
uh, is to understand that these bands mean are directly related to, to water molecular structure that is directly related to function of this particular water. So if I have, for example, this particular water has here absorbers at this band, and this band shows solubility. And I would like always to use this water to make my coffee and my tea. So I would never choose this water for my tea and my coffee because it, it cannot dissolve very well the coffee and the tea. Just example. Imagine we have 16 with 16 different um, structures, respective functions. Now, just to show you how, look at this. This is 1.475 and here 1.3, uh, here 1.4. The second, the third digit are differences caused by one mole glucose, D-glucose, D-manose, D-galactose. The sugars are very similar, but they have different structure, different place of the OH. And this different place of OH just curves the three-dimensional structure of water molecules. And because we when you change the structure, it changes the spectrum, so we can identify if this is mannose or glucose or fructose or whatever. whatever. And all these are millimolar. You can see what low, how much, how low is the concentration of the of the, of the sugar in in the water, and how big is the change, the, the response of the water to the light. This is the response of the water to the energy, right? So means that we don't need to eat a lot, okay? So we need a little bit to sustain. Water doesn't need big perturbations. Water works with very, very tiny, small perturbations. So we need to eat a lot, different food, different molecules, to get different um, changes of the water absorber bands. But we don't need quantity. And now, this is the aquagram that shows the lowest concentration. They completely change the, the water structure. Uh, uh, you have different changes of the water structure with high concentrations and low concentrations. This is what I'm, I'm telling you. For example, this is... Um, sorry, uh, the, the red. The red <coughs> lines are 100 millimolar. And this blue-green are... 0 0.02, 0 0.1, even yellow, green, up to 10 millimolar is here. And this is my motor. This is the motor water. The motor part, the working part of the water. Why sugar is important? Why do we need sugar? Why when we have lunch, we say, oh, I, I need something sweet. At the end of the dinner, oh, we need a little bit of chocolate. <laughs> but just a little bit to make the water working. So you see, all the right part of the, of the aquagram to you, it's all less hydrogen bonded water. It's all with free OH, uh, free uh, uh, superoxide. The left part here, this red, is hydrogen bonded water. When we get sugar, we get hydrogen bond, we, we get energy stored in the water structure. But if it's too much, then we get more and more and more and more, which makes us big. Okay? So we don't want water to get like a bulk water like in the lake. So we want our water to be like in the, in the cell. Water in the cell, by the way, is completely different of what I drink now. Water in the cell is all on the surface of other molecules with free OH, with free, um, it's a dipole, with free charge groups that can connect with other molecules in the, in the cell and work. Water that is needed into the cell is in between intercellular space and a protein called, and of course there are um, uh, several mechanisms, but for example, one of the molecules that makes water in from the intercellular space coming into the cell is aquaporin. Yes. And aquaporin is just cutting hydrogen bonds, making free water molecules, 
that are like <coughs> Lego. A single Lego that goes into the water and goes exactly into the place where it's needed to work, to connect, connect this molecule with another molecule, etc. So, now, now going to an interesting, how the water changes with <coughs> the moon. So you know that the moon is influencing the sea, but how does the moon influence the water we drink? Yes and no. We did, uh, I sh here the results are from three years. We followed four different waters, mineral waters. One of the waters is under 1,200 meters under, the, the source is deep, 1,200 meters. The other one is 50, the other one is 20. Completely different structure, completely different mineral waters. But they mixed two of them and they made uh, drinking water which is perfect. Perf well, there's no perfect water, but it's very good. Now, and we follow these three waters. Uh, we, we, we were taking spectra every single day for three years, already for five years. We, we have data for five years. And see what happens. Now, here is, we call gold water, silver, bronze, and this is a mixture of, uh, of silver and gold. This is something to, to remember. So, you know. What can you see here? Can you see the dots? Okay. Um, this is the temperature, temperature effect. See how all the waters, except this one, this is a very stubborn one. It doesn't change very much with the temperature. Okay? But this gold water goes like, so it's 0.9999% correlation coefficient with, with, the, with the temperature. Yeah. It follows the temperature. We're talking about the environmental temperature. So we're talking about 20, 20 90 degrees to, to 40. Um, this, this one, skin is a combination of gold and silver, and silver is stubborn, so does a little bit skin shizuka, okay? But bronze is following the temperature very nicely, and this is unique. Every pure water, even the water in our body, which is not pure, follows the temperature. Of course, at, but now, when looking at this particular water and this particular structure of the water tells you that if our body has respective structure, it will not follow the environmental temperature. There is a way of structure of the water in the body to stabilize it. And the stability of the, the water is coming from the structure, uh, um, according to the temperature, of course. Now, how, how humidity affects? Humidity, there is a correlation with hu humidity, but not that high like with temperature, and moon's age. Now, the one, two, three, these particular waters do not show correlation. But this particular water that is a mixture of the two follows the moon cycle. And guess what is the name? Well, by Jap the Japanese colleagues, they know what Kimushizuko means. It means moon's drop, right? <laughs> Only this water follows the moon. Only this water follows the moon, and, and this is how she gets her name. But th the problem is that this water get, got her name many years ago. I don't know how. But this is what we found. And these are the aquagrams of all these waters. Now, you can follow me with, uh, this is year one. I will show you aquagrams for three consecutive years. One, two, three. Um, this is age, moon age. Uh, we have from one to uh, 14. This is eight. And you could see, the, uh, it's the water that is very stable with the, that follows the moon age is this 
the, the blue. And the one that is uh, stubborn is with uh, this color. Okay? So you could see how they change okay? with the moon age. So we could see that yellow and orange are everywhere with the moon. Now, here it's better. You could see the three different gold, silver, and Kimishizuku, how they change with the, uh, all the full. They're so different. By the spectrum, you could see that they're so different. But at certain point, they get very close, like here. These two waters, Tsukino Shizuku and silver, because silver is part of, of Tsukino Shizuku, but not exactly the same. And they get closer and they get apart. They get closer apart because Tsukino Shizuku is very stable water. So this is how you can follow, and, and this is the, answers the question, if all these companies, um, they're selling mineral water, um, then it should be the same all the time, which is not true, right? They're different. They're definitely different, but maybe we don't have any, um, um, at the moment, idea about this difference. Now, um, I'll show you, just, we have published a few papers on uh, this one, particular is DNA. Because we, what we did, in order to, um, we announced aquaphotomics as a new scientific area after we started from water and we started adding different molecules to the water to see how the water structure changes following those molecules and its con concentration. So we started with different molecules, then we moved to um, bacteria, uh, cells, then we, we did uh, uh, plants, and we did animals, and we did people. So I showed you people in, in the beginning, now I step back, I start and, um, and sugars, now I'll show you DNA, just, just to, uh, to get the idea how small concentration of DNA could influence water. Um, this is, we're talking about micro, micro molar uh, from 8 to 20 into the water and this is how this concentration changed exactly at the, the bands that we found under the first order. So DNA in the water modulates water. DNA in the water changes water structure in a unique way. So, can we answer the question why we're so unique, each of us? Because of DNA, because of the water? Both, maybe. Now, when we have UV, I think this is something that you might be interested in. In this very, very small concentration of DNA in water, when we added UV to the samples, you could see these black dots and the red dots. This is the samples that were introduced to UV light. And these are the, the, the samples that are the control. Which means that, I'll show you later, how much UV. It means that how, what you use, you use UV light, you use uh, visible light. This light, what does it do? This light just changes the water structure. So UV light changes the water. And we can measure how much. We can measure how much this water has changed by the UV. Now, here is the dose of the UV. And the dose is kilojoule per square meter. 5, 10, 15, 20. And look at this now. Remember this, this form? This is usually the way water changes with the temperature. This part is the part of the water, the water motor, the free water molecule, the working water. Okay? So when we have DNA into the water, water becomes working. When we introduce UV, what happens? The other part increases, the energy part increases. Logical, right? Very logical. So, and we can see it and we can measure it with this spectral pattern. And now we can even measure, even measure but and, and one point that I wanted to show is these are the exact bands that we have already assigned the specific water windows. 
So that are in our programs that we can measure by our instrument. Now, we can even measure the uh, dimer of the DNA after applying UV, the destruction of DNA. So, and now uh, just a few words about water quality monitoring. Everybody and ev in the world, people are giving tons of money to, to develop biosensors for toxins, for different molecules to be found in the water. Because the, the way they see the water quality is what is in water. And when I, I, I went to <clears throat> a conference of people doing water quality and I, I said, uh, do you measure water structure? And they did not understand the question. They do everything but water. And now what we can do with this spectrum, with this holistic spectrum, is we just monitor the spectrum of the water. And suddenly, when it changes, we, then we can try to find what is the reason for this change. But it's a holistic marker. We can, we can see how the, the, the energy of the, the water changes, where these changes occur, and we could even identify what type of perturber or, or molecule could be the, the source and the reason for this change. So it's completely new, new concept for here. For example, so this is the, we monitor the water, of course, water is changing with the temperature, the humidity, many things. But sad, and it goes within three sigma, we call it, we call it natural deviations, right? But suddenly it goes out of this three sigma here. So, this is a place where we start looking and asking why, we're trying to find the reason. Here again. And this, which we did experiment with acid and lactose and salt in a very low concentration, you can see acid is one millimolar, 0.9, lactose 0 0.8, and we were successful. And as you can see, the same macrograms. Now, and the same we could do with um, the mineral water, with the groundwater. We just follow the groundwater and um, <clears throat> rain, raining, after raining, the, the water changed. Actually, this particular result, this one, was when um, the water goes through the filter and the filter got uh, dirty, old, and suddenly we got this different aquagram. We change the filter, we, we get back to normal. This is the normal aquagram over, over mineral water. Um, so, uh, I don't have much time left. This is uh, um, a work related to insulin um, in different salt um, solutions. We, we are very close to understand the mechanism of fibrillation <coughs> by using, uh, explaining by, uh, we published a paper that says, we found out that in the beginning, um, before um, we have this log lag gestational phase of fibrillation, and at the lag phase of fibrillation, we get this water structure. The log phase is represented by this structure, and this is the stable stationary phase. Which means that once we get here, with these three bands, we know that there is possibility of fibrillation. Why I'm giving you this example? Because this is related, this might, could be related to amyloid in general. We might be able, because the information in the body everywhere is the same regarding the water structure, so we might be able to, to sense this lag phase of amyloid heat formation. Um, and this is a, a work of probiotic bacteria, which is interesting. I'll, I'll go, I'll, I'll show you on the diagram. Um, the question about which are those bacteria that are probiotic? And what about, how they're different with this? 
So the, our idea was to, to show how, what do they do with the water. And you could see the, the non-probiotic bacteria is here. It, the aquagram looks like a normal, this is 1462, uh, 50s, a bulk water specific bound. And this is solvation so so um, abilities, fine. Uh, but the probiotic bacteria suddenly increases the power of solvation of motor functions of the water, of working. So if you have probiotic bacteria in your gut, then you increase, you change your water in, in a mode, working mode, in a working mode. You help water to work more for digestion. So if, if this is in this side, then we're in trouble because we have, if we have full covered this side, then we have more battery than, than working. Um, and uh, I will end up maybe with this example. Uh, these are plants. A mosaic virus is a disease in soybean. And because it's very much related to uh, heartbeat uh, work of Rasmussen that we heard about, and I said, oh, this is very much like, like spectroscopy, the same. Uh, we had these plants, uh, soybean, inoculated with disease, with uh, mosaic virus. And we monitored all the plants um, through a month. Every day we took spectra from different levels of the plant who average the spectra. And these points, the green points, are the points of the spectra of the healthy plants. And the red points are the points of sick plants. Can you see the difference? Number one, we could see that they are different. They have absolutely different spectral pattern, which is a, a definitely a holistic marker for diseased and, and um, healthy plants. But when you look at, at those points as a group, what can you see? Heart variability has to be with lots of variations, right? And here is the same. A healthy group of people has to have variety of spectra. But when you have a perturbation, when you have a disease, this disease makes us similar. The disease decreases delta, decreases the changes, makes us closer and closer and closer and closer. So that's why we could say we could get a specific spectral pattern for this particular disease. So we use it for diagnosis. When we have healthy group, no disease, we, our, uh, everybody happy, different, unique, disease makes us similar, similar. It's not good. And now, look at this red, sick plants. Do they have absorbers here? No. Do they have here? No. Do they have here? No. This is the second overtone. And it, it says, this is the motor part of the second overtone. It means that the water does not work in these plants. So this is one of the reasons to get this plant sick. Now, um, and these are... <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is a study about uh, genetically modified soybean in, in Hokkaido, in um, Japan, which is ama amazing how they can make different genetical, mod genetically modified plants to get very susceptible to um, environmental temperature. And less and less and less, five different levels of susceptibility. Mm -hmm. And we started to take spectra of these plants, we didn't expect, uh, decreasing the temperature. We monitored how the plants react to the decrease of the temperature. And we thought that this spectra data will distinguish different groups. And here we are. This are A is more stable plant, E is less. And there's a beautiful linear correlation between the distance from class to class and how they have been designed. 
So you could see the beauty of these people that developed these genetically modified plants. At, at the same difference, I mean distance, uh, means they are different from each other uh, towards the ability to uh, stay at low temperatures. And what we understood, this is the aquagram of the sick, um, of the uh, stable plants, A, and non-stable E, and you see that the non-stable here is the bulk water, which means when the temperature lowers, they make ice clusters. And these ice clusters, they just break the cell wall and they die. But the other ones that are clever, genetically modified to be resistant to low temperature, they do not make these clusters. Look at this. They don't have it. The greens guys are only here. Restructuring, they don't have hydrogen bonded water here. Which means that all the water is working to help this plant stay alive at low temperatures. So we can understand the phenomenon. I told you about the prion disease, uh, and this is, um, again, I'll finish with the food and white. In milk, when you take the spectrum of the milk, by the aquarium, by the light that comes out of the milk, you can, you can easily see if low, it is a low fat milk, this is the aquarium. Middle, here. Round. High, here. Now, we can even prognose milk yield, how much this cow will, how much milk will give. It's amazing, but this is another story. Lactose, sugar. Low sugar milk has this aquagram, high sugar milk has this aquagram. This way, this water st structure. Protein, here. Yeah. And with this, I <coughs> will end up my presentation telling you how much we can do with this aquaphotomacy, how, how big is water and how many applications we could have. But the point is that uh, my, my, my maybe closing uh, sentence will be, sunlight has given us amazing light. On the top of visible, we have invisible that is so beautifully interacting with the water. And we have to understand what is happening and why. Thank you very much for your attention. We have time for very few questions. We're running a little late, but at least a couple of questions, if there are any. Rasmus? Well, actually, I have 500 questions, and I will start with the first one. No, I just would like to congratulate you. I think it's mind-blowing what you're doing, and I look very much forward to work together with you. And I would actually just like to see the very the second slide you showed with the overtones and the absorption of light. Yeah. Maybe you can just say a few words why there are several times H I H two O and the absorption in this overtone range. This why it several times appears. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. You just showed it. This one. No, yeah, this one. There are several times H two O in this absorption rate. Yeah, because it is, this is the overtone range. And, uh, and you have overlapping of uh, the main bands are in infrared. And when you start calculating the first overtone and the second, then you, 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 you get very close or overlapping the band, the second, third overtone of oxygen or of CO2 or water. And then water has lots of many bands, so they start overlapping. Yes, but an overtone is where the, the vibration becomes dense and then it goes away again. Can this be a reason why it's like, it's a spectrum, like you call it a window, that the overtones, it's not a, a sound itself, but it's just like the density of the, of the yes, waves. Yes, exactly. So we have, this is the part where the density is very high. We go to the longer wavelength, we have a lower density, infrared are very low, and then zero. Yeah, <coughs> yeah wonderful. A 
with the question? Yes, we, we use spectrophotometers okay. that measure how much light water absorbs okay. at each particular uh, energy, wavelength, band, frequency. Yes. Okay, that's what I missed. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um. Did you try uh, measuring? water contents like the cow other, but on people with different diseases? Um, yes, uh, we did. We, uh, a, a group, uh, working with people is very tough, um, but we just started <laughs> tough in terms of uh, policy. Uh, they make you uh, write lots of protocols and uh, but we, we just started um, an experiment with uh, using this particular what I showed you some programs about to see how we can help people with uh, disease um, by drinking water if they can if we can help them. So, but uh, we, we don't have uh, yet. No, oh, because I was thinking that perhaps you could find a specific signature, like yes. yeah, for yes. different diseases. But it yes. might also actually also be that uh, during that we would have to redefine. The diseases, exactly. because the diseases are just like you can see, the plant doesn't is not too healthy. But there could be many different reasons, and you could perhaps see that in the water. Yeah. The second th question that I had was that given that you have some problem with organic matter, um, what happens if you then and you see that there is a problem with the water in the plant? What happens if you then supply water with a different quality? Does that help? Like, so you can make a genetically badly modified soybean resistant to whatever, if you put, <laughs> not necessarily, um, but you could make it healthier. Yeah, I, I, no, I think <clears throat> if, if we could uh, solve the problem with the water instead of uh, genetical engineering. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, you could make it resistant yeah. with yeah. specific water quality yeah. instead of... Well, it's endless things that we can do yeah. with this, but just... Uh, I wonder if you could apply this to flower essences or other essences where you, you know, just for a little while have a flower inside the water bowl and the sunlight does the job and you take it out again so there is no substance left or even you make an essence of a landscape or of starlight where you have only a metal imprint. Yeah. Can, you, can you use this for, for showing effects there? Um. I'm sure yes. Um, we, why I say I'm sure because uh, sometimes in my lab when students drink coffee, I can see this by the spectrum that uh, by, mm. by the spectrum that they have taken. So I can see the coffee in the spectrum of milk, for example. <laughs> it's not that they put coffee in the milk. That the, the smell of the coffee is in the in the room. When it goes into the into the sample, and I can see it in the spectrum in the water bath. <laughs> you can't lie. Yeah, they can't. Yeah. So that was the reason to say no food, no drinks, nothing in the lab. So water knows everything. Thank you very much. Thank you.